Automatic crafting is coming to Minecraft in the next major update in the form of the crafter block which will be in Minecraft 1.21. The experimental snapshots are giving us early access to this block so let's take a closer look and go through a number of examples. So let's cover off the basics first. This is our crafter block. It's similar to the other redstone family blocks that we have with the smiley face texture and it's kind of like a HD version of the regular crafting table here. But what is so different about it? We can load in some items. So let's craft ourselves a block of iron. Now we've put stuff in here, but I can't take this out. I'm clicking madly here, but I can't extract that. The only way I can do that is by sending in a redstone input to this block. And that gave us our resulting block of iron. Now, of course, we can use more than just a button on this block. It is fully redstone compatible. So all the other redstone components in the game can interact with this block. So for example, if we want to feed it some items from the side here, we can do that with a hopper. You can see it goes into here and we can extract items out of here as well by using a hopper beneath it. So these can pull items out and you can see the crafter is now empty. When items go into the crafter, they always follow the same loading pattern. So for example, if we're going to put a stack of iron ingots into this hopper, we have it locked at the moment. We're going to see it fill from the top left, then it goes across to the right down the next line, then it'll start to fill from here to the left to the right, and then on the same on the bottom line from the left to the right. So let's unlock this and you'll start to see it fill up. It starts from the top left and then it works its way down to the bottom right. Now what's cool about this is when there is an uneven distribution of the same item. So for example, we're going to put in some redstone here. Now I'm going to remove this item. So at the moment, these are all two. This is the next block that has less than two. So it's going to try and fill this first before it will put in the next iron ingot into this slot. So let's take a look. Aha, just like magic. So it's kind of like a nice way to distribute the items inside the crafter. And that becomes really important when you get into some more difficult crafting recipes. When you use a comparator on a crafter, it detects the number of used slots inside the crafter. So for example, these are all empty at the moment, so there is no power level coming out from the comparator. But if I were to put a single item into one of these slots, it's giving a redstone output of one. And if we were to put in more items inside the same slot, it's still only going to output a signal strength of one in this example. That's because we're only using one slot. So if we're going to put in some extra items into this slot, now you can see there's a signal strength of two. Now we've got a signal strength of three, etc. You can see it's only occupying or detecting really the occupied squares that we have inside the crafter. And that includes even when you disable some of these squares. So I can click into some of these. These are now occupying it. It's reserving these slots so nothing can be placed into here through redstone. So if I go and put in our stack of iron ingots again into here, you can see these are always going to be skipped now. These are kind of like disabled slots. But from a redstone output perspective, they are counting as a power level because these are being used. So whenever there's a used slot, whether it's being disabled or with an item, it's going to increase the power output by one from a comparator. So when the crafter is fully occupied, the maximum output strength from the comparator is a power level of nine. Now, if you play on multiplayer servers, you probably don't want to leave items inside your crafter. Remember, this is not player specific, so any player can come along and steal whatever items you have inside this UI. All recipes are supported by the crafter, so you can craft anything in here, but you need to know the valid crafting recipe. If you put in anything like this, this means nothing. <laughs> there is no crafting recipe like this. You try and output something and nothing happens. The top texture of the crafter lights up when you do have a successful output. So it was a successful craft. So here I'm converting iron ingots into the nuggets. This is a successful craft. So when that happens, the top area here lights up. It's kind of like lighting up redstone. And I think that's a pretty cool effect. And this little open area, here, kind of like the mouth, <laughs> you can see it opens up and that's where it spits out the item. It will always come out from this side of the block. And you can also see that this block can be placed in all directions. And when you do that, you get some interesting textures because each side is different. So you can use the different textures to your advantage, even if it was just for creative building purposes. You can craft the crafter using a crafting table, say that three times, <laughs> using iron ingots, redstone, a dropper, and a crafting table. You can mine a crafter using your hands, but using a pickaxe is faster. It drops itself when it explodes. You can't move it with a piston. And the sound implementation of this block is just amazing. Just listen to this. 
Let's say you have a large mining operation going on and you want to craft yourself some endless supply of diamond pickaxes. Well, with a crafter and inputting the right recipe, you can craft infinite pickaxes. So we can keep pressing this button and we keep getting ourselves a diamond pickaxe. Now that's pretty cool and we can do that with some very simple redstone. It's just a timing thing to make this work and you just need to set up the right crafting recipe. The crafter really shines when you've got some simple recipes that you want to use. So for example, maybe you want to create some bamboo blocks. We can just load in some bamboo, just throw that in, and then we'll start to see some bamboo blocks being spun out of here. And it's all automatic. All I had to do was put in some bamboo and you can see it's throwing out the bamboo blocks. Let's take a look at the recipe. So you can see it's filling up the crafter with the bamboo. Once it hits all nine squares, it's outputting the block of bamboo. And we're achieving that with just some redstone. So we know the output signal strength from the comparator is nine blocks, or power level of nine rather. So once it gets down to here, this is level nine, that sends the line of redstone pulse, and that then generates the block of bamboo. Now we can do the same thing with iron. Maybe we want to create ourselves some iron blocks. Maybe you've got an iron farm, you've got a whole bunch of iron ingots. This is a simple way to compact that down and get yourself some blocks of iron. And maybe you want to do some other kind of crafting. Maybe it doesn't need all nine squares. Maybe you need a portion of the squares. So we can do that by locking it away. And maybe we want to create ourselves a whole lot of these iron bars. So we can easily do that as well. Let's just throw in some ingots and we'll see if we get our iron bars spot out of here automatically as well. When using a comparator and looking for a power level of 9, it's really important that you disable the crafter slots that you're not using. So here where we're creating iron bars, we only need 6 of these squares to be accessible. So we can disable the bottom 3, and we don't have to. From a crafting perspective, that was valid, but I can also remove these, and this is also valid. You can see we are going to generate iron bars, but this is only outputting a power level of six from the comparator, and that's why you need to disable these ones. If the recipe you want to use in your crafter is only using one slot, maybe you don't want to use a design like this. There is a faster way to generate the output, and here we're going to do that by using a couple of these observers. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our comparator here still, now we're going to put this in subtraction mode, so that's why we have this light turned on. Here I'm using a lectin and I've got a 15 page book turned to page 8 because this outputs a signal strength of 9 through the comparator when this is ready to go and when this is uh, ready to craft, that means all 9 slots are being used. We need to subtract 8, so 9 minus 8 gives us 1. That will power this block, which will then power this piston. That powers the observer and that creates ourselves a fast clock. So let's give that a go. Let's throw in some iron ingots. Now you can see this is a bit faster than how we had the crafting working in that contraption. Now you don't need to use a lectin, you can also use a composter. This nicely has a max signal strength of 8 that you can detect when you have it all filled up and it's ready for composting. So just use that or a lectin and this is a compact way to create a faster version of this design. One benefit of these designs is the clock portion only turns on when there is a output ready for the crafter. But if you're not fussed by that, you can just put in your two observers on top of each other like so and then just put in your blocks for crafting. So if we want to go ahead and still create our nuggets, we can do the same way, it just means this clock is always activated. When the recipe you want to use inside your crafter requires multiple ingredients, that is when the redstone complexity can start to increase. So let's take a look at this example. Here we want to dispense a firework in real time. So first of all, we have to build ourselves a firework star. We need some gunpowder, a die, and the effect of the firework. Then we also need another gunpowder, we need some paper, and then we need the output of this, the firework star, to then build ourselves the firework rocket, then a dispenser to then dispense the firework. So let's set this going and talk through it. So first of all, we need this machine to warm up. There's a few duds and that's based on this kind of contraption we have set up here for the dispensing. But once it gets going, you can see it is generating all our different firework effects. So let's look at this first crafter. You can see it's getting fed in by these hoppers, which are getting an item in each of them through these droppers. We've got the different dyes, we've got the different effects, and we've got the gunpowder. That's generating the firework star. And then once that is ready, it gets, dis uh, gets moved into this second crafter, which is then adding in the additional gunpowder, the paper, and that generates the rocket. 
The rocket then gets moved from the crafter into the dispenser. So we could store this if we wanted to, perhaps into a chest or into a barrel. But here we're using our dispenser. And then we're using our little uh, detection here of our um, observers to generate a clock and then dispense all our firework rockets out of this dispenser. So that works pretty well. But what happens with a complex design like this is when the crafter is perhaps midway through crafting and you log out or maybe you go out of block range and you have items left behind, it can really mess up your crafting recipe inside these blocks. Remember, these don't have a lot of smart. They only fill from the top left and then they work their way down. The way that I solve for that in this design is that once I've turned the machine off, I always drain the contents away from the crafter. So that's why we have these chests down here. It's really the overflow or the junk. So whenever this has been midway through crafting at various stages of the firework, once you've turned off the machine, to clear it all out and get it going for next time, you can just drain it away like this. And then uh, when you're ready to go, you can fire it up and then you'll get your fireworks again. Now my preference with a contraption like this is rather than using a comparator to detect when you're ready to send a pulse to this crafter to generate the output, is to use a clock. So don't use the comparator, use a clock so you can control the timing a little bit better. And then you can also compact down the sizing of your contraption as well. So over here, we're always been using a comparator to detect when it's ready. Here, we're just using a redstone clock based on different timings to know when things are ready to be crafted. If you use a lot of redstone in your world, you've probably crafted a few dispensers in your time. You know how much of a pain that can be but we can solve that with the crafter block. So here we're crafting ourselves the dispenser with the bow. And if we don't have any bows available, we're going to craft that as well. So two crafters used in this design. This first one is crafting the bow if we need it. And then we are crafting our dispenser with this crafter block. So let's press this button and see what happens. Hopefully we get ourselves a dispenser. Come down, there we go, one dispenser. All right, so let's watch this. So as we press this button, you can see each of these slots are being filled up with a particular item. And that's going into the right order in the right sequence, and that's crafting our dispenser. So we have our droppers here laid out, connected into our hoppers, going in a line like so. That's feeding into this crafter block here. And this first hopper represents the top left block or the slot in the crafter. The next hopper here is this one over here and then so on. It works its way down through this crafter layout. So that's how you can know how to lay out the different blocks in your chests. So cobble, 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 another cobble. <laughs> then that goes into your bow. Then you need some more cobble, more cobble, your redstone, and then more cobble. So that's how you lay it out to craft in your dispenser. Now we're also using a line from this button press to craft our uh, bow here as well. Now this is pretty important because you can do bulk storage for all these. These have higher uh, stack counts, but a bow is a single item. We don't want to run out of these. So that's why we need to hook up this extra bow creation process as well. And if you think about it, uh, when these get generated, when you have it stored up like this, the potential to bulk store bows is quite a massive. Like all of these, this is storing 64 bows just in this one crafter. And each one of these is now representing more and more bows that you can feed into this. So look at this at the moment, we've got down to this one here and we press this button and you'll notice that we have the same number of bows. And that is because every time we craft, we are crafting a bow at the same time. So this is always feeding into the system. We shouldn't run out of bows. In fact, we can store just as many items uh, for bows as we can items for the other slots. And that creates a simple way to craft our dispensers. In this design, we're using a button to generate the output for this crafter. But if you were going to use a redstone pulse or some kind of circuit to automate that portion, so you don't do the button press, you will still wanna do some kind of detection against each of these droppers here to make sure there's items in them. And also probably wanna drain away the contents if you were to leave the area. So just as we talk through this design where you can put in the different contraptions with the hoppers to make sure that you don't have a messed up crafting recipe with your items, you can do the same thing here, but because we're doing it through a button press, we don't have to worry about that. Now there's definitely some gotchas with the crafter that may not be that obvious on first use. And we're going to talk through a couple of those. So in this example, we're going to talk about the input speed of ingredients going into the crafter and the output speed of how often you want to craft something. 
So we have a clock here set up. So we're gonna set this going. So we're crafting here TNT. You can see items are being fed in. Now we're going to speed up the process of items being fed in by using two hoppers. We have two hoppers that are connected to this chest of gunpowder and we have two hoppers connected to this chest of sand. Those are all being fed into this crafter and that is enough with the speed of this clock to make sure we're not putting in less items that we are generating from the crafting. So in unlike these other examples where some of them we are crafting the single item in real time, here we have a backlog already stored up. So we don't have to wait for items to go into the crafter to generate the first output. We have all these slots already queued up and that's been uh, allowed in through these hoppers. So we have to be conscious of the speed in, in which we send the redstone signal into this crafter and the rate of ingredients being fed in. So that's one thing to be mindful of. So we can turn that off as well with this kind of design. So over here, we're going to put in some extra safeguards as well. So we are going to do a similar detection. We wanna make sure that, let's see if we can find, here's our crafter down here. We're generating TNT again. So let's take a look. So we're looking at the output. We have our subtraction mode here. So we're doing a detection to know when each of these slots are having something in it. But what we're also detecting is if there's anything left in these droppers. So if there's something not in one of these droppers, and it could be either of these droppers, the sand or the uh, gunpowder, in this case, the gunpowder is empty, we're going to turn off the machine. And we're doing this because what will happen if this machine was on right now and I was to remove this, the next available item to go in is only sand. There is no more gunpowder to go into the system. So the sand will go into this slot and that would break the recipe. So we don't want that. So a design like this will put in that extra safeguard. It's looking for the inputs going in to make sure you've got enough ingredients. And as soon as you run out of ingredients, you stop the design. And if you do have enough ingredients, it will just resume and start generating the output. So let's do that. Let's grab ourselves some gunpowder and let's set this machine going. So we'll put in some gunpowder. That is now going to allow this clock to start up and we are now going to be generating our TNT. So this is a pretty cool way to put in some safeguards. It's not something that's really compacted down. I'm sure there's very ways, various ways to shrink this down and perhaps do it in a more elegant way, but I think this is just a way to illustrate how you could put in some extra safeguards to make sure your recipe is always going to stay intact. And you can see the machine is turned off now and that is because we have run out of an ingredient. And what is that? This time around, it was sent. And we do need to remember that the crafter is in early preview and snapshots at the moment for Minecraft 1.21. So the block and how it works could change in the future, but I think we get a pretty good idea of how it could be used. And I think it's pretty awesome.